On the 27th of September and on the following days until now, in the Republic of Artsakh, we have we've been having human losses, injured people, and large-scale destruction of property both public and private property. I mean, public infrastructures, etc. Let me give you some information, some statistic information that has been updated as of the 4th of October, because today, on the 5th of October, uh, Azerbaijan has continued targeting civil population uh, with intent. And the main target has been the population of Stepanagerd and the civil infrastructures and objects in Stepanagerd. However, Regarding the consequences of today's actions and potential uh, casualties, we are still uh, clarifying the data, which is why I will give you the data as of yesterday. Starting from the 27th of September until yesterday, 19 civil, we have had 19 civil losses including one child, seven women, and 11 men. As of now, since we are still clarifying some personal data, we cannot give you concrete ages of the lost citizens, but about half of the 19 losses are above the age of 50. Uh, we have had different causes of death and causes of injury. Mostly the causes were missile or artillery attacks. We've had cases of death from drone strikes, even self-destructive. Uh, and we've also had cases of death from uh, high-strike missiles, especially in the last few days in Stepanakert. We've also had cases of uh, air death from airstrike. This is the preliminary data because we have involved different experts and we are analyzing the types of ammunition and weaponry applied by Azerbaijan in order to uh, present a more detailed analysis down the road. At the moment, we only have preliminary data. On the basis of this analysis, we can conclude that the overwhelming majority of the victims was caused by targeting with intent, targeting civil population. For example, we can say that it is highly improbable to uh, deviate from the target when hitting with a drone. For example, in the city of Hadrut, the drone targeted a residential building. This is just one of the examples. I can give you many more examples of missile attacks in uh, Stepanakert, which were caused by special missiles, which which can lead us to assume that they tried to target residential buildings and the population of these residential buildings. This much about the human losses. Regarding injuries, I would like to say that until now we have over 80 injured people, I mean, um, until the 4th of October. 60 of those were heavy injuries. 48 out of those 60 were men and 12 were women and children. The figures are still being uh, clarified, but we have had at least four injured children. 
24 of these 60 injuries were recorded in the residential buildings. I mean, the people were inside their homes or in their yards, which means the, that these very residential areas were specially targeted. Part of them, about six, if I'm not mistaken, were public places, and again, we have uh, more detailed information about this, which we have In the city of Stepanakert, we have 23 injured civilians. In the city of Martuni, Martuni Martini takes uh, the second place, after that comes Martakert and a number of other settlements, including Hadrut. This makes it obvious that the city of Stepanakert has been the main target, which creates additional concern and further proves that Azerbaijan is aiming at densely populated areas with the intent of causing heavy human and material losses and maybe even terrorizing the settlement or creating panic. In this regard, I would like to emphasize that in the past few days, Azerbaijan has started to use missile and artillery weaponry towards important infrastructures in the Republic, including energy supply systems, large infrastructures, including means of communication, central means of communication, water delivery systems, and gas pipelines, which has also suffered some losses. Due to this, in Stepanakert and in several other states, uh, settlements, there have been some disruptions in provision of electricity and means of communication, as well as gas and water. All these and these targeted operations come to prove very clearly that Azerbaijan is aiming at destroying the important infrastructures of the Republic, which is not only a crime of war, but also a crime against humanity, because this in itself causes or can cause a serious humanitarian catastrophe. Fortunately, there have been some rehabilitation work implemented by the state, thanks to which the consequences for the population are not very heavy yet. But at this rate, the consequences can be very heavy from the humanitarian point of view. Another issue I would like to highlight regarding weaponry and ammunition. Ever since the 27th of September, Azerbaijan has been using weaponry prohibited by international humanitarian law, especially cassette, uh, missiles and cassette bombs, which, as I said, are prohibited by international humanitarian law. And, of course, the Republic of Armenia and the Republic of Azerbaijan haven't ratified this treaty, but about 150 states have ratified it, and this rule can be considered a rule of international humanitarian uh, law. As a consequence uh, of wide use of cassette weapons, we have had a large number of injuries, and the cassette weapons still pose 
a threat to the civilian population because, especially in Stepanakert, they have been widely used, both cassette and other types of weaponry. Part of them hasn't detonated. We also have photo and video materials to prove this. And this, in time, can pose a th serious threat to the civilian population and especially to children. This is why I can say that in the long term, the Republic of Artsakh is going to face a humanitarian crisis, if not a humanitarian catastrophe. And I think that Azerbaijan is doing this with malicious intent in order to terrorize the population and to keep them in constant hazard. Besides, as I have already mentioned, we've had cases of drones targeting civilians, not only objects, but also civilians, which again is prohibited by the rules of the war. The next fact of concern is the use of mercenaries or, I should, should I say, terrorists. Our, the state agencies have been warning about this since day one, and the international mass media have also been informing about this. In the past few days, we have had clear proof in the form of photos and videos that there are terrorist groupings with significant uh, experience from Libya and Syria that have been hired by Azerbaijan. And these terrorists are fighting against the Republic of Artsakh, which in itself is of course prohibited because we also have the appropriate resolution of the UN in this regard. Besides, this conveys serious danger to the population of Artsakh, taking into account the experience of this terroristic group in carrying out uh, genocide actions in different locations. And uh, this is something that the international community should also pay attention to. Another issue that is of concern to us, and this should be a prevent preventive alarm, is that the Azerbaijan armed forces are controlling the, uh, uh, possess the bodies of certain mm. soldiers of the Artsakh Defense Army and taking into account the experience in the April War in 2016 and uh, the, the cases where uh, the Azerbaijani armed forces were performing crimes against the bodies of Armenian soldiers and even living Armenian so soldiers, I mean uh, crimes of war and crimes against humanity. In particular, we had cases of beheading back in 2018, uh, 2016, sorry, um, in the ISIS style. There were cases of uh, torture of marauding as a result of which the rights of these people and their relatives were grossly violated. And now there is a huge danger that the bodies that are in possession of the Azerbaijani army will suffer the same fate. And this is some something that should be paid attention to by the international community and something we should take preventive measures against. We should try to organize humanitarian efforts to return the bodies of our soldiers. All these crimes that I just mentioned and the hazards that they Pose. 
mostly come from the widely disseminated um, state policy of hate towards Armenians among the population of Azerbaijan and the government of Azerbaijan. For the past years, the government of Azerbaijan has promoted a clear anti-Armenian propaganda in Azerbaijan. They have rewarded the people who killed Armenians, including civilians, and the same thing happened back in 2016, when, for example, a soldier beheaded one of our Armenian soldiers and published a photo, after which President Aliyev publicly rewarded the soldier. And of course we all know about Ramil Safarov, who, who butchered our Armenian soldier, Gurgen Safarian, who was asleep in the hotel in Budapest and was after that sentenced to life imprisonment. However, in 2012, through a corrupt scheme, he was returned to Azerbaijan and was immediately pardoned and granted the status of a national hero by the government of Azerbaijan. This and a lot of other cases come to prove that there is a emphasized anti-Armenian policy in Azerbaijan, which creates additional tension in the times of war. And uh, in the current atmosphere, it can also result in ethnic cleansings towards the population of Artsakh. Fortunately, our defense army and our armed forces have taken appropriate counteraction in order to ensure the security of the population of Artsakh. This much about factual evidence. And as an assessment and as a message, for me, as the human rights defender, it is very important to appropriately, appropriately record these crimes and the hazards that they pose, both by us and the journalists and the international community. However, let us divide the international community into two parts. One part is the international legal community that has committed itself, regardless of the political or legal status, to support the uh, defense of human rights in any location. And the second part is the international political community, which also has committed itself with different ratified international documents, but unfortunately, neither have visited the Republic of Artsakh, and at least in the past 10 to 15 years, have not uh, carried out any activity in the Republic of Artsakh, also under the pressure of the Republic of Azerbaijan, and they avoid personal contact, which, which is from the point of view of defense of human rights, uh, actually hypocritical action. And I think these uh, agencies do not have the right to speak about defense of human rights if they are using selective methods, if they are not supporting the most vulnerable societies and groups of humans. Due to this, and in this context, it is my message and my call to the international community to visit and to record these crimes on the spot and to take appropriate action instead of just speaking these empty words. These actions should include concrete sanctions against the Republic of Azerbaijan and its government because apart from violating the rights of their citizens on a large scale about which the international community 
uh, speaks Hayri, about from time to time, they can see that they are also violating the rights of the citizens of the Republic of Armenia on a large scale and in a systematic manner, including the right to live and a number of other fundamental rights. Therefore, the appropriate action should include economic sanctions, sanctions against military deals because we have produced evidence that the weaponry and ammunition procured from other countries are widely used against civilian population. And this, by the way, puts serious responsibility on those who sell this weaponry. All the countries that sell weaponry to Azerbaijan, these countries are actually supporting genocide action or danger of genocide action. And therefore, if there are further crimes against the population of Artsakh, these countries will be responsible and should be held responsible. And at least from now on, they should refrain from selling weapons to Azerbaijan. This much, if you have questions, I'm ready to take them. Mm -hmm. One question, Mr. Beglarin. Mr. Sahanyan, public television. Apart from uh, civil uh, infrastructures and civilians. In the past few days, the adversary has targeted uh, groups of journalists. Could you please mention uh, what is the trend in the past few days? Is this uh, targeting of journalists continuing or has it stopped? Yes, I have spoken about these cases in the previous press conference. Or Previous, uh, briefings. Of course, this is highly reprehensible. We have had at least two cases of targeting of groups of journalists, direct targeting, one in the city of Martuni, as a result of which two, uh, three, or, or four, three or four journalists were injured. Four, actually, yes. Two of those were French and the other two were Armenian. Analysis of this case shows that the journalists were a direct target because the center of the city of Martini were targeted and our experience shows that usually before shelling they use drones, reconnaissance drones in order to see uh, what are the targets and then they start uh, bombing. And the group of journalists was at the moment working in the center of the city of Martini and they also had press markings, both the journalists and their cars. This is why we have enough evidence to claim that this was a targeted operation against the journalists. And the second case was in Marta Gerd. A microbus was targeted. Fortunately, there were no injuries. But again, this too was a direct targeting of the press car because it had a sticker. In the past two days, we haven't had any direct targeting of journalists, we don't have any evidence about this, but there is a fact that Azerbaijan has launched a large-scale missile attack against Stepanakert, and this, of course, puts the life and security of journalists in danger. Here we should mention that the danger is wider and it's, um, it's posed to all the, to the entire population, including the journalists. And in this regard, Azerbaijan has to conduct more differentiated military action. And in Stepanakir, there is actually no differentiation because the entire city is civilian infrastructures and just civilians. Mm -hmm. 
կարելի է մեկ դիտարկում էլ, եթե հարս չկա։ More than 60 settlements have been targeted by Azerbaijan in a systematic manner. This data will be presented in more detail in the future. As a result of this, a number of settlements, including Stepanavan, but also a lot of large settlements, a lot of people have had to leave their homes. They were displaced from their homes and a number of rights of these people were violated. Tens of thousands of people in the Republic of Artsakh are, can be considered internally uh, displaced. Part of them are actually refugees in the Republic of Armenia. In this regard, of course, we are very thankful to all those who support us and especially to the Republic of Armenia, to our compatriots in Armenia who do everything possible to meet our population with hospitality. There are a lot of uh, old people, uh, women and children and disabled persons. We're very thankful to the government of the Republic of Armenia for the support they show. However, I can say that this is a large-scale humanitarian crisis, if not a catastrophe for us. And here the international the international community has a lot to do because, first of all, uh, we need support in Artsakh as well, which was always a rare occasion in, in the past as well. And second, the citizens of the Republic of Artsakh that are in the Republic of Armenia now, I think, should receive support from the international organizations as soon as possible. But let us not forget that in the Republic of Artsakh, a number of people have significant humanitarian needs in Artsakh, which is why attention should be paid to our needs. Of course, I myself am in constant contact with the government of the Republic of Artsakh. We are raising the humanitarian issues that we face. We're trying to solve them by considering the targeting of our important infrastructures by Azerbaijan, conveying humanitarian aid to our citizens is becoming more and more difficult. And therefore, I would like to call upon international organizations to take concrete actions in this regard. Thank you. If there are no more questions, this much for today.